Today, we will synthesize nanoscale green tea iron nanoparticles using green tea polyphenols as the reducing agents. Before you conduct your experiment, make sure you have your proper protective equipment, including a lab coat, goggles, gloves, long pants, and closed-toed shoes. Here are some of the supplies that you will need. A hot plate, specifically with stir control. A one milliliter micro pipette. A magnetic stirring bar. DI water. A 100 milliliter volumetric flask. A 250 milliliter flask. A 50 milliliter centrifuge tube. Filter paper. A scale for measuring your materials. And a centrifuge for filtering. Now for your chemicals. You will need iron chloride, sodium hydroxide, commercial green tea that you grind into a fine powder. For step one, you will begin by adding your weigh tray to the scale and zeroing it. Once your scale is zeroed, begin adding your finely ground green tea to the tray until you have measured out a total of 10 grams. Once you have finished measuring your green tea, it should look something like this. You are then ready to add it to your 250 milliliter flask. Once all the green tea is added, grab your magnetic stirring bar and place it into the flask with your ground green tea. You are now ready to add your DI water that was measured using a 100 milliliter volumetric flask. Slowly add your DI water to your green tea mixture and place it onto the hot plate. Turn both the stirring and heating elements on to medium. Heat your green tea and water mixture until 70 degrees for three hours using continuous stirring. Make sure to check your temperature regularly using a thermometer. After your green tea has been extracting for three hours, we will begin the process of filtering. For filtering, you will need a vacuum pump with tubing, a flask for collecting your concentration, filter paper, and a 47 millimeter magnetic filter funnel. Make sure you wet your filter paper before you begin adding your green tea mixture. After you have turned your vacuum pump on, begin adding your green tea extract to the filter by using a micro pipette. You will filter your mixture until you have reached 0.45 micrometers. Your finished filtered green tea extract should look something like this. Using a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, we will ensure we have the correct amount. You can use DI water to adjust to 100 milliliters if needed. After you have finished measuring, you can place your green tea extract back into a 250 milliliter flask. If you are not using your extract immediately, you can store it in a refrigerator at four degrees Celsius. For step two, you will be measuring iron chloride. Remember to zero your scale before you begin measuring. Measure 2.7 grams of your iron chloride to use for your synthesis. Once you have measured 2.7 grams of iron chloride, you are ready to make your solution. Using a funnel, add your iron chloride to a 100 milliliter volumetric flask. Begin adding your DI water until you have reached 100 milliliters. Cover the top of your flask using parafilm and begin mixing until all of the salt has dissolved. You have just prepared a 0.1 molar solution of iron chloride. You are now ready to begin your synthesis. Add a magnetic stirring bar into your green tea extract and place onto a hot plate. 
Make sure that your stirring is on medium. You will not need heat for this step, so make sure that element is at zero. By using a 50 milliliter barrette, we will dropwise add our iron chloride solution to our green tea extract. You will immediately see a color change once you begin adding your solution to the green tea. After you have finished adding your 100 milliliters of iron chloride, you will continuously stir the solution for 30 minutes. You will start to see bubbles and particles forming on the outside. This indicates that your synthesis has begun. Step 3. You will begin by calibrating your pH meter. Remember to rinse the pH probe with DI water before and after measuring. Measure the pH of your ferric chloride solution, green tea extract, and the mixture. Make sure to keep the probe inside the mixture and ensure that the magnetic stirring bar does not touch the pH probe. Step four, you will begin by adjusting the pH of your mixture to seven. You will dropwise add sodium hydroxide or hydrochloric acid. Then you will stir your mixture continuously for 24 hours. You will begin to see black, blackish, or gray precipitates forming at the bottom of your glassware. These are your clustered nanoparticles. Step five. After your mixture has been stirring for 24 hours, you can transfer your contents into multiple 50 milliliter centrifuge tubes. You will use a micro pipette. Now you are ready to centrifuge. For this process, you will centrifuge on high for roughly 10 minutes. After your 10 minutes are up, discard of your supernatant as this is considered hazardous waste. You will repeat this process three times using DI water. Step six, using a vacuum oven, you will dry your precipitate under a nitrogen rich environment for at least 24 hours. You will first want to remove any oxygen that is present in your vacuum. To do this, you will close the vent and open the vacuum. Once the oxygen is removed, you can then close the vacuum and open the vents. Slowly start adding the nitrogen to your oven and allow the nanoparticles to sit in there for 24 hours. If you are unable to dry your nanoparticles immediately, you can also store your precipitate in DI water. After 24 hours, slowly allow air back into your vacuum oven. Because your nanomaterial is highly flammable, we want to prevent any sudden burning or fire. This slow exposure to air creates an oxide layer on nanoparticles that protect them from further sudden oxidation.
For step seven, you will want to ensure you have respiratory protection as nanoparticles can affect your lungs and other organs. You can use a fitted N95 respiratory mask like the one shown here. Using a mortar and pestle, grind your precipitate for roughly two minutes to form nanoscale, zero-valent iron particles. Once you are done grinding your precipitate, you will transfer your nanomaterial to 20 milliliter glass vials. You will want to scrape the sides to ensure you collect as much of your nanoparticles as possible. Once you have finished transferring your nanoparticles, you can now prepare them for storage. To do this, flush the head of your glass vials with nitrogen gas to prevent the particles from getting oxidized. Step 8. Now it is finally time to use your nanoparticles in an experiment. Before weighing your nanomaterial, make sure you have the proper respiratory protection. Again, you can use a fitted N95 mask. Use a static gun to remove any static electricity from your environment. Without this process, your nanomaterials may become airborne and create a hazardous condition. With this synthesis process, you should get approximately 1.7 grams of nanoparticles. Please note that nanoparticles may be toxic, so store and handle them carefully. Thank you for watching. We wish you the best of luck with all your experiments.